Welcome back to Natalis Principle 2. I'm Dear Darling, and why are we here? What truth awaits us? And why don't we answer more of these questions together? As we're doing a Prometheus Fire thing right now. This is like Deer Island. I don't know why there's so many over here, but... Um, oh, there's a sink statue as well. Um, but we, we saw Prometheus' statue like very early on in this world, so it's not too bad to backtrack towards it, methinks. Um, I don't know if we've done this part yet, so we'll have to do these audio logs when we get back, or these logs when we get back. Where are you going? Prometheus the statue's right over there. Like we're going on a whistle stop tour. Um, I, don't, I wonder what this Sphinx statue is going to be this time. But this has an interesting Prometheus fight where we had to use the... Oh gosh, do we have to actually get up there? Okay. Well, we have to um, use the mechanics of a level to actually allow us to... Um, reach the fire in the first place. Running along with tracks is an interesting concept. A lot of uh, more platforming elements in these Talus Principle secret parts, hey? Didn't expect to have to run up here. Where are you going? You're sort of spiralling around? Kind of like a roller coaster? corkscrew turns or whatever they're called. I used to know what these roller coaster like turns and inversions were called. Hopefully you don't go too much further out until the Prometheus fire returns. Does not look like it. So looks like we're good to just run up here. Be returned back into that plane. And give us a spark. Nice. Um you I did pick up, right? Yearn for a better world. Yearn for it with such intensity that your heart suffers. Why didn't I take a bridge? Keep Who knows? Your eyes on that distant vision, even when you know that you may never reach it. Basically, always keep hopeful of something which might not even be. From Orinia to Athena. Athena, I know that we didn't have the greatest relationship, and I frequently antagonize you. The truth is, I resented you. I resented this mythology of a founder. I thought you had created it deliberately, as a way of controlling us. I wanted so badly to be free, and you seemed to stand in the way of that. Only after you left, number cult of personality grew even wilder did I realise it was actually a burden and an impediment to you. When they turned your myth into the opposite of everything you actually believed, started tearing down your dreams in your own name, I realised I'd wronged you, and I am less free than ever. I feel the war is crushing me. I don't know where you are, where you're going. I don't know if coming back would fix things, but I'm sorry. Orinia. Have we met Orinia? Nice sort of set level of self-reflection, but... Atlas and Ladon. Ladon? From the Atlas Variations by Athanasius. After a bit in years, when Atlas has grown old and tired of holding up the world, he was faced with a dilemma. Heracles, the son of Zeus, was on his way to the Garden of Hesperides to claim the Golden Apples, which were guarded by the dragon Ladon. Ladon, Zeus came to Atlas and promised that if Atlas helped Heracles save the dragon, Zeus would free Atlas from his burden. But Atlas, seeing the beauty and innocence of Ladon, be beloved of Hesperides, could not slay the beast. Instead, he stole the apples and gave them to Heracles, and so he was condemned to bear the weight of the cosmos for another billion years. But though Atlas grieved for his freedom, he was comforted by watching Ladon flourish in the verdant garden. So the sort of like um self-sacrificing more of an evaluation. Was it worth it giving up your own freedom for your own virtues? For joy and beauty from the soul of man, Oscar Wilde. Sympathy with pain, there will, of course, always be. It is one of the first instincts of man. The animals, which are individual, the higher animals, and that is to say, share it with us. But it must be remembered that while sympathy with joy intensifies the sum of joy in the world, Sympathy with pain does not really diminish the amount of pain. It may make man be better able to endure evil, but the evil remains. Sympathy with consumption does not cure consumption. And that is what science does. Sympathy with consumption does not cure consumption. Sympathy with consumption does not cure consumption. Okay. Christ made no attempt to reconstruct society, and consequently... The individualism that he preached to 
He preached a man could be realized only through pain or in solitude. The ideals we owe to Christ are the ideals of a man who abandons society entirely, or of a man who resists society absolutely. But man is naturally social. Even the forbade became people at like last, and though the Cenobite release realizes his personality, it is often an impoverished personality that he so realizes. Hmm. The ideas that we owe Christ are the ideas of a man who abandons society entirely. Interesting. Shallow speakers and shallow thinkers in pulpits and on platforms often talk about the world's worship or pleasure and whine against it. It's rarely in the world's history that its ideal that its ideal has been one of joy and beauty. When you tell people that a society could be built on the ideals of joy and beauty, they think you're a utopian fantastist. If you tell them society will always be built on exploitation and greed, they think you're wise, and so they make the outcome inevitable. Performative cynicism has always been a hallmark of our adolescence. Oh yeah, I meant Cornelius when I said Byron. I don't know if it's this episode or last episode. But has there ever been a society of adults? Can there ever be one? Why is this childishness so extremely powerful? More powerful than joy and beauty. And... Um, and perhaps a very fitting outcome, I suppose. It feels like uh, the actual okay. truth lies Listen, in between. I wanted Hello. to ask you something. Yeah, go on. From your perspective, as someone who's Where did this deer come from? Society, do you think New Jerusalem betrayed Athena? Betrayed is a strong word. In a democracy, people are not obliged to support what the leaders want them to do. New Jerusalem isn't monolithic, I suppose. It's not. You're right. Hard and to Byron quantify that. Of others stood up for Athena. Yeah. What did I do? Just kept working. The occasional sarcastic remark isn't resistance. It's, it's hard to necessarily for something. It's just join or fight a cause or something. Apathy. Right? It wasn't your fault. You can't change history by yourself. If you believe that you were wrong, you can make different choices that are true. Don't let your empathy for Athena make you forget your legitimate doubts. Damn, these are like all true. Can I say all of these? I mean, it's hard to... I understand, like, the apathy, and like, I, I myself am subject to it, right? We all see ourselves as good people, we all see these causes, which would be like, yes, it'd be great to stand up for and fight for, but I suppose the reality of the matter is there's a lot of causes in the world which people are not necessarily apathetic towards in belief, but apathetic towards in action, right? Could I be doing more to help try and save a world that we live in? Yeah, you know, I could be the Greta Thunberg, I suppose, of a world. Is it something I'm apathetic towards, I suppose, like something like the environment and preservation of it? No, but is my action, could it be classified as apathetic? I suppose that's true. I mean, like, I'd, you might argue I do my pieces here and there, but I think that go, kind of goes against the point of what we're really tackling at the heart of the issue, is that these active resistances, that's kind of what counts as something which feel like it's contributing towards a greater goal rather than sort of going along for a ride. And I think that's a hard thing to overcome, to be honest. There's only so much energy you have as a person, and only so many things you can understand and devote your time towards. So, I think it's a very sort of human understandable, like a failing, and more like a, a flaw of mortality itself, and the fact we only have limited time. Anyway, that's not really what you asked, so if you believe that you're wrong, you can make different choices, and that's probably the most will, concise. But it's hard not to regret the past. It can be a fuel for the future. I have another question. How do you feel about Mayor Emanuel as leader? Think about the state New Jerusalem is in. He's put us all in danger. Oh, aggressive. I don't know if he really believes in the goal or if it's just a convenient myth, but I don't care. This is not how you build a living civilization. It's nice to see everyone's different perspectives on him. Where do you think Cornelius is? I don't know. Do you I care? I suspect he's around here somewhere, biding his time. But why? But what he's waiting for? Not a clue. I wonder what you think if Cornelius betrayed us or not. Do you think the goal is a myth? Yes, of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> Simple. What do you want to do with your future? I'd like to help make New Jerusalem the city it was meant to be. Ever the pragmatist. And then, I'd like to help build new cities. On oh, that's Earth lovely. And up there too. Up there. Cities nobody's ever imagined before. <laughs> that's a great aspiration, Alville. Why is it so easy for people to believe in a goal? Because it's something because quantifiable no to give. 
building a better world means ah, taking responsibility. That's a really great making response. Making choices and living with their consequences. Surrendering to nature is just letting go. Really tying into that sort of um, perspective of like apathy. You were talking about Melville. I didn't consider that. It's but easy to believe a goal, not because necessarily it's quantifiable, not because it's something which feels achievable when sat by something, someone that people idolise, but because it's just so easy to. It's so easy to not go against the goal or not to not not believe in it. Okay. Um, well, all of these have basically been maps thus far of the locations. I will say the levels don't look particularly square though, so I'm not sure if these are the levels. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I th okay, I think this must be a map of a location of the levels. And then these four are ones we need to go into and like flick a switch or something. Uh, we can actually probably check out with number seven and see if there's like an obvious switch. Like in the previous ones, maybe there's like a thing on the back. It's not going to be a one-time thing, it's going to be something we can toggle shortly. Because I was like, what if it's a one-time thing, it's like we go into it and like solve a level. It could be something we need to activate in the level itself. I'm just having a quick scan outside to see if there's something notable of like a switch which we can flick. It's been surprisingly sparse, the... that clue. Because it only tells us presumably where we need to go. It doesn't tell us what we need to do at each of these places. But I think by, we can look at the relative positions of all of these levels and then figure out from there exactly which one this one might be referring to. That's quite close to that one and that one. So it could be this sort of trio of three here. Six, seven, eight, right? I think that's plausible. So this theoretically would be one of them that we would have to activate somehow. Now how we do that I don't know because I don't see a switch anywhere. But could be one inside maybe. Or just like a setting that we we leave it in. Anyway, what's the breach? Oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. So we need to be riding that red platform as we go across. Wow, this seems like quite a difficult one. Um, it seems like the first thing we have to do is basically do this. Hmm. So we can grab this. I'm not sure what we do from here, but do we want blue or red? Presumably we want blue. open this that would be powered up by making that one red but um, the thing is this if this is put down there we can't get in here right no it doesn't look like it if this is put there that will power oh that won't open that though Is there a position this blue connector could be to open both? Yes, there is. Okay. So it seems to me that seems the most straightforward thing. Get this blue connector to power both this one and this one. Then pick this one up. We can go through. We get a red laser over there by putting this on that platform. Hmm, but how do we power this? Because we can't make that connector hit the red laser thing there. So we have to power it up with something. We have to either power it up with the connector we're holding. Ah, the gate doesn't need to be open, right? The only way we can open that gate must be using the connector because this one could never 
we can't get that around the bend. So the only way we can power this up must be using the red laser. So, probably what we do is this. Then we go stand on the button. Because now I think about it, we don't need to be riding it, we just need a platform to get to the end. Like that. Um, and then we just grab this thing. And then we can put it down on the button, it will open up the gate, and we can just hop up. Right. Yeah, we don't actually need any active ongoings for us, we can just hop on through. I again, quite a lot simpler than... I initially anticipated it being. Wow, that one was a mind bender. I actually think a lot of these levels are simpler than the other ones. I think maybe this mechanic just sort of lends to very controlled levels. Like it's very easy to see what you have to do for each of these levels. At four minutes, we might be able to do world eight in time. Sorry, level eight in time. Boo. <laughs> Sorry, I'll probably speak to you. Um, but we could do this instead. Let's do this instead because we're already here, right? Oh, it's Lifra's here. Okay. That's an easy one. We can do this and the level at the same time. The reason I have always admired Alexandra Trennan is that even that? in death, That's she number three. to see the world as it is, not as she wanted to see it. Hmm. As they fought. Because I believe this is not an easy matter. It is a mental and spiritual struggle that what we must heck? undertake with great Who's seriousness, this guy? even when we are choking. The ancients believed that for most of us, the world is a shadow cast by a flame. Shadow cast by a flame. Of a cave. Oh, I see. This is the allegory of a cave. It's not to interpret these shapes, but to free ourselves from the cave itself. Which is honestly a very cool allegory. I'm not going to lie. Um, who is this guy? That's a lot of deers. The thing. Let us consider the city. A Shatana Sh Shadir what is a city? Sh It is not a gift from the gods, nor the product of nature. What's this? Unlike block? a mountain or a river, it Try is something this. that must same time. be built through the deliberate arrangements of material by a mind imposing order on the world. Okay. And it is built to serve oh, a purpose. To that end, it has roads and fountains and walls and to the same end it has laws and leaders and though each city is built according to a different plan all cities must serve their purpose or they will fall and become ruins therefore we may conclude that a city is also a kind of machine constructed to improve the life of its citizens city is a kind of machine but this seems like quite a complicated one. We had to get a platform somewhat close. I'm not sure how close it needs to get to that wall. To me, it does feel like it needs to get somewhat close to that wall. We swap with this, put that down there, teleport through. Um, that would open that, but we also get the connector, which is the important part, which we... need um we don't need the teleport anymore while that's happening and then we power that up to go on through and go out to the end and once that's at the end we're good i think once it opens that up there grab the connector swap it through you see what i mean oh um, I was going to say, see what I mean, these levels are much easier, but... Um, how do I teleport? Oh, I teleport over here with the thing. I was like, how do I teleport? Oh. Wait a minute, maybe this is not as simple as I thought it was going to be. Because I I need to... Oh, no, I can put... That's what the ladder's here for. It, I will say that 
one little criticism. The ladder does not feel like it's a satisfying way to solve part of a level. But we had to go over here. Let's do that. I don't actually know if we need a teleporter, but no, we do need a teleporter because we need to teleport through. There we go. Simple. As I said, the levels seem a lot easier in this world because it's so directional what you have to do. There's only so many things you can do. You're kind of forced to do them. Um, but we haven't figured out the Sphinx needs yet. The transference. Um, I guess we'll just see what happens next time. So for now, if you have been watching, thank you very much. This has been Talish Principal 2. I've been Dear Darling. Like, comment, subscription, share is greatly appreciated. Socials, Discord down below. Hope to see each other again. But for now, it's our farewell. So until next time, bye-bye for now.